Quackadoodle, what is up, fellow birds of the spiral? It's your friend of Pal Fearsome here with another guide video, and this time it is for Swashbuckler. Now, you may be looking at this here, this beautiful um, housing uh, creation I made way back in 2016. I made this in 2016. A lot of people were talking about a great, big, beautiful wall, so I made my own and a great, tall, beautiful tower to go along with it. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want me to make a guide on that, be sure to let me know in the comments below and let's get started with a swashbuckler guide all right all right so here i am back at the rug glitch on my swashbuckler first we are going to have a look at the hats we have for swashbuckler now i have um, a couple of choices here i actually have this hat called uh, gambler stetson the important thing is that it gives valor's armor you can pretty much get this in any group chest and cool ranch at level 20 um, it's just really good to have because you can just be put it on when you're at like half health and you can enjoy the benefits of um, elusive and uh, turn the tide you know and uh, still have enough health to you know basically stay alive so it's it's super 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 helpful the next one of course would be this here um, half from tower of manchu you can farm it as a swashbuckler and you can get um, three versions of this a level 55 a level 60 and a level um, a level 65 as well so the important thing walk in darkness assassin strike really good for team battles where you are actually supported um, but an extra hide and assassin strike is really nice to have of course there's a hat and a mushu that gives Valor Fortress. A lot of swashers use that. I don't have it on me right now, but um, that's also a viable option. All right, well, next we're going to have a look at the coats. Now, Blood's coat is something only used for PvE. If you see a swashbuckler use it, hopefully they're using it for PvE. Now I'm letting you guys know the ability of Blood's Flames does not work in PvP. It is a horrible coat for pvp it's only for, for pve only for pve don't use it in pvp it is a bad idea this is an ability based game that being said here are some of the coats they're going to be used in both pvp and pve here we go this coat here great for team pvp because it gives walk and darkness and assassin flume and poisons are like the juice for swashbucklers especially in team battles where you have lots of units to poison and here are some of the other coats I use for various reasons. Um, just whatever suits your style. All these are great and viable options. All right. Well, I guess I will go ahead and move straight into boots. Um, once again, this uh, this particular um, pair of boots, the Imperial Boots of Mu Manchu, only good for PVE. Why? Because Frozen Tide only works in PVE. So only PVE for this particular set of boots. So that's the reason why I see some swashbucklers wear them. All right, here are the rest of the viable options for boots, and they aren't very many. There are just three of them. This here, Valor's Armor. I don't recommend using this a lot unless it's in like a 4v4. But, you know, once again, whatever strat, you know, works, you, you may find this viable. So uh, be sure to try that out. Um, this is the most common one for uh, swashbucklers to use, and the main reason is because of the 12 dodge in the Valor's uh, Fortress. Damage is also quite nice, um, but you could also get this version if for some reason this version over here is not dropping. This one comes from Mushu. You can get them pretty much any group chest at level 45. Um, so those are pretty much the boot options. All right, well, I guess it's time to move on to the weapons. This is hands down the best weapon for PvE and PvP. Unless you're farming with Scratch, you might want to use a high damage will based weapon. This is so your swashbuckler can carry the scratch buff. Now, do not use this in PvP. Most of the times, scratch is banned. Most tournaments I've ever been in, he usually is. Not only that, you wouldn't be playing swashbuckler if scratch was allowed. So, don't use this weapon outside of PvE. Really, really bad. Um, but it's good for PvE, okay? This is good for PvE, PvP, and PvE. All these are viable options right here. Really good to have. Um, but there is one uh, weapon you can get if you just don't want to farm at all, and it is really good as well. I'm going to show it to you. It's in the crown shop. Um, this weapon here, this level 70 uh, boarding knives, it gives an assassin strike and some pretty good stats. Now, perfectly understand you buying this because honestly, 
I mean, I would rather buy a weapon than farm for it most of the time, but I farm for it when I'm, you know, way back when. I farm for all of my weapons way back when. So, and the uh, staff of power is pretty sweet, so I don't completely regret it either. So those are pretty much the, the weapons you have for Swashbuckler that I would recommend you getting. All right. Well, let us move straight into um, eye patches. There are a couple of viable options. I guess I'll start out with the one in the crown shop. Um, you have basically St. Fido's patch, level 70. If you absolutely do not have anything else dropped that has an ability that is equipable for Swashbuckler, this is a last resort option. It does give some accuracy, some dodge, and some weapon power, which is better than nothing. Um, but that being said, let's get to uh, what is actually preferred. So what I have right here is the Exceptless Talesman. This is hands down the best eye patch because it gives Baylor its fortress. Uh, which of course reduces 50% incoming damage uh, for five turns. Really good to have. Um, some other semi-viable options here. Revive, uh, better than nothing once again. And then you have the Sky Spirit, again, better than nothing. But this is here is, you know, this is what's ideal for pretty much anything. All right. Um, I guess we'll just roll right into totems. You have a couple of options. This one's pretty standard, but you could get the Stormzilla Egg. Now, I thought I mentioned right now, if you do not know where to get some of this gear, look it up in Pirate 101 Central Wiki. There is a link down below in this video. You can click on that and you can search any of the items. You can pause the video, look at the name, type that name into Pirate 101 Central uh, Wiki, and you can basically find where to farm it and, you know, some other details about it. But this is a guide about, you know, what gear um, is advisable for Swashbuckler and, you know, companions and such. Uh, so, that being said, there are a couple of banners you could try. Uh, I don't recommend doing this often um, because there are just too many counters to it. Uh, but uh, the Swashbuckler banner is uh, fun to play with from time to time, especially in PvE. But every now and then, you know, you can troll around in PvP. It's uh, quite nice to have this. Um, but honestly, it might not be worth the trouble because it's like 12,000 strip in. I mean, that's a lot. It'll take you forever to get it. So, just so you're warned. This here drops in Tower of Moon Manchu, super easy to get, so this is the most common one. Um, and it is quite good. Alright. I guess we're going to go ahead and move right to Charms. Alright, well, we are at Charms. Here's a good one for team battles. I don't see this one here used uh, very much at all in um, regular 1v1s or... Um, PvE, but it's it's pretty nice to have on hand. You have the seven lamp slot. You can buy this bazaar, you can use rocky key. Again, use Pirate 101 Wiki if you don't know where to get these. But I recommend getting your hands on all three for you know whatever situation or whatever strategy you plan on running. And here we go. We have the rings. This one's pretty much universal. However, for some reason, the brain thief circle or the lower level counterparts are not dropping, then I would recommend actually getting a revive ring from the Skull Island Bazaar. So that um, covers charms and rings, and uh, I think we'll move on to pets next. All right, last but not least, of course, we have pets. Important thing is elusive uh, on your pet because you will be able to get elusive three on your swashbuckler if you have that. And having 50% dodge when you're half health, super important for Swashbuckler. Some other great perks are, of course, Relentless and Rally. Soul Reaver, uh, not as important. Tough, not as important. Joba's Kiss, Sent to, not as important. Um, but, I mean, they're they're all right to have. Um, a Brutal Charge would really be nice on this pet. So if you get Brutal Charge, that's, that's a really good one as well. By the way, if you guys want good pets, I tend to... Um, do like a pet morph giveaway once a week or once a month depending on how i have it scheduled right now it's every friday at 5 p.m central time so if you want to hang out with me while i stream and get yourself some good pets uh you you can uh you can go to uh, realm avery at 5 p.m central time every friday and um, i'll be doing that so that's pretty much all i have for pets um and that covers gear all right well next we are actually going to have a look at the power setup um now there are a couple of different things you can do power wise honestly i'll put these two powers like right at the beginning because they're kind of important 
um, particularly for um, 4v4, which is what I really specialize in. Of course, this one will be like up here. This power, Black Fog, will be up here, and you'll put more of your hits, like Assassin Strike, right after that if you're just doing PvE or farming or something like that. And 1v1s, you'll want to spread out your protections a little bit more, uh, but uh, for team battles, you will definitely want to have this like your first power and some of your um, abilities that last a little while or can do infinite range damage like these two. Of course, you'll also want your Veiler's Fortress right after that, particularly in 4v4s, because you have to pull this right away in order to make it super, super useful. So, uh, and of course, your Veiler's Armors, um, you want those far up there as well, and a lot of hides. Most of your damage will be done by your poisons, so I also put those up quite high. And later on in the game, you'll be using your Assassin Strikes, especially in 4v4s. Now, there are rare times you will actually heal, so... Those are all on the second page, uh, so that pretty much covers the power setups. Now, as far as what you want to train, I'll give you a quick look at all of that. Uh, well, Naturally Spooky is what I chose, and I recommend if you make a swashbuckler, go Naturally Spooky, but don't don't um, stress too much if your swashbuckler isn't, it's not, it's not going to make that much of a difference. It's just the best, you know, as far as, you know, what you can make your, um, your swashbuckler. Witch Hunter is kind of nice big uh, smashy weapon uh, for relentless um, of course you get fast uh, three but that's something you should train on all of your um, all of your pirates and yeah relentless from hidden trainer and uh, yeah of course elusive and all that I mentioned the elusive pet earlier and yeah that covers pretty much everything that you need to train so whatever you saw as far as what was in my powers um, the abilities here, that's what you need to train, and of course uh, these things over here as well. All right. All right, so we're going to move on to um, uh, the Companions, one of my favorites, uh, because it is super important to set your Companions uh, in, in the way you want to use them, in the roles that you want to put them in. El Toro, great for his buff. Also, counter Spotch Buckler with that first strike three, you know. Just think of whatever you're going to use your companion for and set him for that. Ratbeard, obviously, has sold the line, and his tankiness makes him great for basically blocking the paths of his enemies. Um, for Pellboarders 3, you know, reducing accuracy. First strike three also makes him great for counter swash as well. Giant Defense on Contessa. Here, I'm just going to give you guys a look at how these guys are set, um, and it'll be basically a good, it'll be give you a good idea of how you probably want to set your uh, Splash Buckler companions as well. Um, so you just pause the video anytime you want to have a closer look, because I'm just going to look through these real quick. Uh, this guy's pretty good, but he's kind of slow. That's like his main. Um, his main downfall, the Battle Angel over here. People think that uh, pack companions are so powerful and everything. They actually aren't. Um, the best thing about packs is actually the pet snacks and the gold and the script and stuff you can get from them. It's really not much else. But um, yeah, there we go. There's my Bonnie Ann. You could put, you know, Overwatch 3 in your Bonnie Ann instead. Um, that's perfectly viable. Um, Depends on what you're going to use them for. And here we go. Hopefully you get a general idea. Now there are other companions you can buy on uh, your swashbuckler. Um, you could get um, Exeter for 4v4s. Exeter is pretty much good on all characters. Uh, Temujin's pretty much set the same as uh, Subadai, so uh, you're barely ever going to use Wu-Tang, but I guess I'll just show you. So that's pretty much all the companions that you'll be using as Swashbuckler. Now, there are a couple in the crown shop that I could get, uh, but once again, you know, the free companions are plenty good enough. But if you were to buy two companions, I would guess Nausicaa, maybe Goro, and maybe, um, maybe Exter in the crown shop right here. So... That would be your best buys right there. All right, well, that pretty much covers um, companions. All right, well, I think uh, I would best finish this video with a little bit about the swashbuckler uh, as a class in general 
and uh, the best play styles for swashbuckler. Swashbucklers are, are a quite fragile class. Uh, you pretty much have to hide in poison for most of the game. That's pretty much what they thrive on. Um, bleed damage over time, damage while hidden, and while basically staying hidden. Um, so they're like the assassin class, but without the immediate damage. Um, you might find in other games like uh, League of Legends. Um, and you might consider the, uh, the the assassin immediate damage to be something more like Buccaneers, because Buccaneers by far put the most immediate damage out there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically how Swashbuckler plays. Now, Team PvP, you don't want to charge your Swashbuckler out there immediately. But you want to have your swashbuckler handy because they have trap sense and they can basically walk over bombs and traps so they are really really good for that in fact that's pretty much the reason why they are more useful than a buccaneer in a 4v4 or 3v3 or 2v2 because they can just walk through bombs and they won't take any damage or barely any damage at all um, so that's uh that's a little bit about swashbuckler now i plan on making uh updated versions of this guide um, next year, possibly, you know, possibly next PvP season if, you know, anything changes or we get an update that changes Swashbuckler. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this guide. I do really hope that it helps. Um, and, you know, if there's any way you can help me out by, I don't know, sharing, liking, subscribing, any of that, you know, hey, I appreciate that too. Um, so for now, uh, until next Thursday, until I make another video, just stay awesome and hang loose. Yeah, peace.